Boom. I think we're good. Cool. So yeah. Okay, great. Great. Yeah, man. Great. Mm. Hey everyone, my name is Josh. I'm one of the developers at Vehicle, and today I'm just going to give you a quick primer on mob programming. So this uh, whole presentation has actually been a collaborative effort between me and Brian and Andrew and Justin, the devs here at Vehicle and Hamilton. Um, let's dive right into it. So what is mob programming? So the general concept is uh, a group of developers, usually between three and six is a good number, all working together at one terminal to solve uh, one or more uh, group of tasks. Um, each programmer takes turns in various different roles in the group. Uh, you know, uh, usually it, you work in a cycle where um, uh, everyone sits in their respective uh, position, uh, and then uh, they try to get as much work as done in a fixed amount of time, maybe three to five minutes, and then they all switch spots. So it shares the, the workload a bit. So the roles in a mob, there's only three main roles that you need to be aware of. The driver is the individual who's actually sitting at the keyboard currently typing out what needs to be typed. The navigator is the one who's, giving, who's uh, managing the task and giving directions to the driver so that uh, they know what they, need, what they need to type out and uh, how to get through the task. And the mob are the rest of the members of the group who are sitting there watching as the driver and navigator are working. Um, they can provide advi uh, advice and feedback as well, uh, which they would provide to the navigator, uh, but they wouldn't provide directly to the driver. The only one speaking to the driver is the navigator themselves. So think of the navigator as being like the quarterback of the group. So here's the general breakdown of uh, how mob programming works. So before you actually begin the exercise, you have to figure out what your tasks are that you need to complete. Um, in particular, you want to figure out where you need to start in the, in the task. So once you understand the entire scope, decide on what your initial task is. You don't need to decide everything in advance, but at least get, uh, figure out what step one is going to be. And then two members of the group are chosen as the first driver and navigator. Um, if you want to get, um, if you want to get a, a head start on things, often the person who is either the most familiar or the most confident in the task, is the person you select as the first navigator, because then that helps you get past the initial stages and then you can get the task done a lot faster. Um, after that, the, uh, the driver and navigator will work, work for five minutes to try to complete the task. Um, if they do complete that task, they can move on to the next task. And uh, after those five minutes, then everybody switches spots. The driver uh, currently becomes the navigator. Another member of the mob will step up and become the driver and the navigator will return back to the mob. And then you'll keep proceeding like that in a circular pattern until you, everybody has had a chance to be in every single role. Um, and you keep continuing this process uh, in five minute intervals until either all the tasks are done or you've reached some predetermined time at which you've decided you wanna stop. So when you're doing this process, there are a few tips that help things go a little bit more smoothly. Um, uh, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna avoid the temptation to interrupt the navigator. And if you're anything like the four of us, <laughs> it's a very difficult thing to do. The navigator is in charge. You know, you can, you can, you can, you can talk to the navigator, but when they're talking, then everyone else should be listening. Uh, when you're defining the task you need to complete, you should be as specific as possible about what you need to complete or else you might get lost in the weeds. So the navigator, uh, if, when they're speaking to the driver, they should be providing the high level of intention of what they're trying to accomplish. They don't need to be telling, you know, giving specific keystrokes to the driver, unless of course the driver asks specifically, um, like if you say, uh, I need you to write a test to do this thing, and the driver may not know exactly how to do that, so you might say, can you tell me what to type out to, to do that test? You know, then they can provide the specific keystrokes if they happen to know them, but otherwise you're just managing the high level intention of what you're trying to do. Uh, the navigator can ask the mob for help and is encouraged to do so if they get stuck. Navigator's not alone. They may be in charge, but they're not alone. So you know, if you're navigating and you're stuck, please ask if anybody else happens to know what they need to do. And uh, once you've finished your mob session, it's always good to have a quick debrief after you're done 
talk about you know what worked, what didn't, um, how well you did in completing the task. You know, just you know, you don't want to just like finish the mob and then walk away. You want to actually learn from what you've done. So take five minutes, go over what's whatever is in your mind with the group, and you'll all be the better for it. Okay, do you have any questions about any of that? Perfect, okay, so what we're gonna have is uh, we've actually set up a little uh, mob exercise for Brian, Andrew, and Jamie, uh, sorry, Justin. <laughs> Jamie, <Jimmy's> Brian. <laughs> <laughs> for, for these guys to do. Um, now, uh, they have no knowledge of the task that I have set up for them. No, that's not true. Not true. <laughs> I know a little. You've never met me before, sir, have you? Sorry? I said, you've never met me before, have no. you? No. <laughs> what? Um, so we're actually, we actually want you guys to see them in action as they're completing a short mob task. We pulled this off of Exorcism, which if you've never seen Exorcism before, it's a uh, learn how to code kind of site. Um, you can, uh, there's tons of different lessons in different languages, ranging from easy to difficult. Um, and uh, the website is exorcism.io. If you're, even if you're an you know, experienced developer, there's still things you can learn from this site, so it's worth going to check out. So this is the exercise that I have selected for them. Okay. And they're all gonna come down and get in their respective positions. Yeah. And uh, you guys are gonna watch them work <laughs> yeah. okay. and see how they do. Uh, all right, so I'm drag this over slightly. We should turn the video. I guess I'll navigate to it. I'll try that. Um, yeah, I'll grab the keyboard and uh, yeah. we should. Yes. Oh yeah, we'll have to be careful to enunciate what we speak. We're kind of facing the screen, so it might be difficult to hear us. If you can't hear us, just say something and we'll pipe up. Sorry, what was your question? Can you say part of the mob? Talk to the mob? Not yet. We're just having the three of them, uh, just to, so you can watch how it works, and then uh, later on, we're actually going to have we'll let you participate in the, in the mob as well. <laughs> Keyboard. I was. Cool. All right. So um, the problem we've got is uh, so I I never played Dungeons and Dragons. So this was new to me, um, and I did just kind of briefly read this uh, ahead of time. But um, essentially, when you start uh, to build your character and your abilities, you have to roll dice. Um, so to do that, this is my understanding of it, you need to uh, roll uh, four six-sided uh, dice. Um, and six times, and each time you need to take the three highest numbers um, and discard the lowest one, and then you add them together. And so the first time you roll these four dice, and in following this pattern, you'll determine your strength, and then you'll determine your dexterity, and then you'll determine your constitution. I have no idea what these entail, really. <laughs> I think there's, there's like, but I don't need to know, it's fine. Because the, the point of this is we, uh, yeah, need to go through and uh, make the nice thing with exorcism. Uh, the, they give you a set of tests already that fail because you haven't written any code. But you just need to go through and actually make it uh, pass. So, yeah, so we will uh, we will start this. So to actually get it going, um, I've already done this, but you're basically sign up for exorcism. You download the exercise, um, and then you know you I, you can optionally submit it to be reviewed or public and, and everything else, but. Uh, yeah, we have some. Yeah. 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 Whoops. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. So, yeah. So, you start. can't turn that light off if it's easy. Yeah, that might be better. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Can we also, can you everyone see the terminal input? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> cool. All right, um, so I don't have a timer. Yeah, we can just start with, I guess we can do five minutes each. I'll time you guys. Hmm? Four minutes? Cool. Do you have the, yeah. Sorry? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna set to five. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we will uh, we'll start five minutes. I will navigate. Four minutes or five time. minutes? Four, sorry. Four minutes. Yes. All right, go ahead. All right, so my, my little intention is to run the test, which you're already doing. Uh, we, we started that with the NPM run uh, test. So every time I change something 
in the code, or you change something in the code, uh, it should you just save it, whatever. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, sure. It'll sure. it'll go. Yeah. So it'll, uh, it'll do that. Cool. So uh, yeah, my high level intention is uh, to get the first test to pass. So if we open up the D and D character spec .js, uh, scroll up to the top. Um, yeah, so basically the, the test is calling uh, the expect, uh, it's expecting the result of this function to equal negative four. Um, so to get this particular test to pass, if we go to, um, uh, let's make this function return negative four. <laughs> Literally return negative four. Yeah, let's get rid of that line. Hey, all right, so we can read Chris Pump. We did something good, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> we actually do high fives and, and fist bumps if we get stuff going. So that's great, we got the first test to pass. Uh, so now let's move, I'd like to move on to the second. So we, I X them out, so it's X test, uh, which skips the test. So if I get rid of the X, save it, run it, just this fails, right? Because we're returning negative four, but negative three, so. Um, yeah, if we go back to the problem, I can't remember the exact uh, way. Yeah, if we go to that one, yeah. Um, I think it's, you scroll a little, a little bit up. Uh, yeah, so it's in that middle paragraph, your character's hit points, blah, blah, blah. The second one of that, I think, tells it. So you find your character's constitution modifier by subtracting 10 from the constitution, divide by two, and round down. So yeah, my high level intention is we need to take a parameter in that function, which is three and whatever in there, uh, three and four, and then it should return it based on that uh, that formula. How do I switch tabs? I don't know. Let's yeah, just worry the about mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, first thing, yeah, we just gotta add a parameter. Sure. Um, yeah, so I think it's what, 10 minus the value. Oh, yeah. Ten minus uh, value, and we divide by two, and then we gotta low, yeah, round it down. <clears throat> oh yeah, bed math. I forgot about that. <laughs> so it should fail, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's saying, uh, yeah, Billy, blah, blah. Where are you right there? Four. Scroll up a bit in the test, sorry, um, in the terminal, oh, the bottom. Oh. Yeah. Scroll up a little bit. Uh, is it? Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what it's actually equaling now. So uh, if you scroll up a bit more, actually, in the middle. Yeah, so I think it is value minus. Yeah, value minus. Yeah, if you scroll up a bit more, we should see what. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we expected negative three. We got three. So I'm not sure why that did. Uh, Is that 10 minutes? That should be 10 minutes. Or four minutes? No, I guess almost. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only four minutes if you get a little stuck. So this is by 10. Yeah, can we go back to the problem uh, for a sec? Like in the browser? Uh, yeah, so this is subtracting 10. Oh, sorry. So yeah, value minus 10 divided by 2 oh, and round yeah, down. We're so not that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, value minus 10. Yeah, oh, it's time. Oh, yeah, there we cool. go. We're really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we got one test to pass. That's good. So now, yeah, I would uh, rotate off. Uh, the driver, who was probably itching to do something else, uh, is now the one in charge. And uh, Justin is up to do it. So, yeah, we can start the timer again. Go ahead. Okay. Cool. So we are on which one? Modifier for three is negative four. Okay. So what we would need to do is do some math. So if I understand it correctly, it's not, this is the ability modifier for three, which is negative four. I, I have some DD knowledge, so I'm just trying to fail as to how. Navigator. Uh, yeah. If you scroll up a little bit, um, I think it's where you run again, and yeah, it's only off by 0.5. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we just have to round up. I think it's, is it just math.round? Floor will always take the absolute. Yeah. 
Yeah, less than or equal to a generic argument. I thought there was a round. Is there yeah. no round function? Uh, I think it needs to round down. So I think four may work, but I'm not sure. I think we should, we'll round it. This one. Oh, yay. OK. There we go. Hey. <laughs> OK, I misread the, the, the statement there. Um, OK, let's go to the next one. So then for five, it's negative three. Let's run this out. Passes. Yeah. Another good sign. <laughs> This is, so you don't, <laughs> this is so you just don't write in a giant if else. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. What happened is this, return this. Yep. Which would actually be kind of crazy. But anyway. <laughs> so yeah, let's just keep on running this out until we fail. By default, this one did have all the tests running. Uh, I just X them out. Uh, there we go. There we go. We go through the flow that a lot of the. Oh, wait. All right. Yes. Okay. So, ability scores must be at least three. Okay. So, let's go back to our function, the ability modifier, with the definition the other, the other time. Our production tree. There we go. Um, so, okay. Let's save this off to a. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me just reread the test again. Yeah. So ability score less than three throws error. So I think that's what our parameter might be. Ability modifier. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the production tools real quick. And then above this line on six and a half, just, um, you know, if value, is it less than three? Less than equal to? Less than three? Yeah, then just throw new error uh, with the correct decimal. Which I don't think it says. So we're actually get that from our, our test code. Uh, test number four? Test number four. Jeff? Test number huh? four minutes? Not yet. Wow. It's the longest four minutes ever. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> uh, uh, actually, not that one. Oh, just not that one. The one above it. Yeah, one. Billy Scars um, must be. Oh no, sorry. It's one test. One test. Oh, it even tells you basically how to do it. Okay, that's not that. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Why don't we do three minutes for this last one? All right, three minutes. It doesn't feel that long when when you're at the keyboard. Um, but yeah, it's a good amount of time. Like we juggled. Uh, I think we had ten minutes at one point. It was like five or six people. That's like an hour before you're back. <laughs> so it's way too long. Um, four or five minutes seems to be the sweet spot where you can keep it engaged. And that's what we kind of said. This is a hard roll, three to six people. But like above six people, again, you can start to get a little uh, zoned out uh, if you're on the edge. Yeah. Let's do a quick three minute. Okay. Time start. Okay. Okay. So. Um, just copying this text into that to, to throw that error. Okay. Do the test to run again. Okay. Oh, all right. So that one failed. Let me modify. So our first test failed. Uh, score less than three throws error. So that one passed, but our first test now is failing. So, uh, so navigator. We have a less than equal to. I think it's asking for strictly less than. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Huh. Okay. okay. Navigator, I thought that maybe it's score versus the value. Oh, so the result of that. So yeah, if we can maybe if we can save um, that math up for us as a variable and then check that instead. So the driver can totally pipe in, but like if the drive navigator's like, I don't want to do that now. <laughs> they, they totally are allowed to do that. Okay. So, uh, four? Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was actually. Mr. Navigator? Yeah. It's actually asking for the result of this function because some of our test cases would always throw error if that was occurring, right? We could never have a negative number if but those are valid. So I think it's just asking for the, the, uh, the initial value, the value getting passed into the function. Okay, so you want to return value still, regardless of the score. For the whole thing? Yeah, the whole one, yeah. Okay. Is it, uh, yeah, greater than 18, not greater than 18? Yeah. Um, I think so. That's a little That's never like, yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> when they're green, everything is perfect. Hey, all right, that's time. Cool. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a, a little taste as to how it works. Um, yeah, we, we definitely interrupted each other a little less than we sometimes do, especially with like a more complex problem. Um, we've, uh, but yeah, it's, just, it's been a, we usually do about an hour a day uh, of, of this on a particular task, either an extra system or a lot of time on a specific task for uh, a client project. And A, we're able to get unstuck really quick. Like you saw twice, we went a different direction. Immediately someone's able to be like, hey Navigator, actually I read the thing again on their laptop and it, I think it should be this. And then we can go back and try that uh, and go from there. Um, yeah, plus we're able to just kind of get a better feel for uh, you know how we can work with each other and, and, and get to know the team a bit better. And a lot of times, not as much this one, but like how to like use the editor better. <laughs> you know, like a lot of times people are like, oh, you can do like option enter and do this and that'll import this thing automatically. Um, so then it'll allow us to save time later on. Um, yeah, any, any how, questions? How do you guys decide what things to model? To work on? Um, a lot of times we'll okay. vote. Yeah. yeah, voting, it's not an exact science. I've always found if it's a manageable thing for one person to do in you know, a shorter amount of time, maybe like a one hour, two hour task, it's a pretty good candidate for a mob. Um, just because that's typically how long we work. We work at about the same thing. Um, and also just domains of everyone, what they already know. So there are parts of an application that one person will know way, way, way better than the other people. So even just using a mob as a type of onboarding process, just to familiarize other people with it, that's another great candidate, because there are things that you know, Brian might know a lot about, and he's like, oh, okay, I better share this knowledge. I have a task on this. Let's mob on this, get everyone introduced. That's another great and in general, the more problem solving a problem has, the better it is to mob on because you do get that more collaborative energy when you're working on the problem. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions? Cool. So yeah, so we'll uh, we'll keep this one set up. Uh, we can reset it. Uh, we've got one set up in there, and then we can also set up in the other room. So uh, yeah. Are they all different things, or are they all? Nope. Well, we do the same one. Uh, yeah. So you can kind of get a feel for it that way. And, uh, but there are other problems we could totally set up as well, uh, if people want. So, yeah, um, yeah if, you're, if you're not interested, totally cool. You can uh, observe other people doing the mobs uh, or um, just hang out and chat. Yeah. So, cool. so who's interested in mobbing? Yay. <clears throat> and thank you, Josh, for, uh, for doing yeah. the demo. <clears throat> Yay. <clears throat>